Hey, what's up? I'm X. I'm going to give you 10 tips for last man standing. You can trust me because I'm ranked like 480 in last man standing. That doesn't mean I'm the best, but these tricks have helped me get the wins and at least two conversations with girls at Dave & Buster's. So let's get right into it. Now some of these may be obvious to seasoned veterans of LMS, but to those of you who do not already know, organize your loadout. Not only knowing your items, but knowing where they are is important for being quick in a game. Here's my setup. I like to start with my mage gear already on, mostly because I start my fights with an ice barrage. I put my range and my melee gear separately on the top of my inventory, so that when I change my gear, it doesn't leave the top of my inventory. Many players like their gear towards the bottom because it's closer to the spec bar when they switch tabs. I also cut down on the additional restore that you get because prayer doesn't drain here and it's just inventory clutter. I add the Tome of Fire to my setup for additional mage bonus, but the spirit shield works fine if you're just starting out. Make sure you pick your favorite god cape and color of mystic to spice up your outfit. In the top right, you can also use Ancients, Fire Surge, or Vengeance. Don't let anybody shame you for using Vengeance either, but don't be surprised if you get long-ranged. Pre-pot as soon as you can. I like to do the Ceridoman Brew into a Restore, into a Ranging, into a Super Combat. This will start me at 115 HP and maximize my stats for the fight. A lot of LMS is just a battle of who hits the other person more, so you really just want to make sure that you're hitting them more and not wasting time eating. After I win a fight, I immediately do the same potion rotation. I start at 115, and it allows me to take more damage before I have to eat again. On the same note, minimize your eating and knowing when to eat is really important. This is something that you'll acquire just from participating in LMS more and more. To be safe, I know that the max hit with range is somewhere around 30 to 40, and same with melee. Barrage is typically in the 20 to 30 range. It will change depending on your opponent's gear, but I like to use these as a general rule. It's also safe to assume that if your opponent is running at you, that they are going to melee you. Sometimes they use this to their advantage to try to trick you. Like I said though, if you're eating, you're not attacking. Eating a shark gives a delay to attack, but sipping a potion does not. Making use of triple or double eating reduces the time that you spend scrambling for food and gets you back in the fight with higher HP and faster. If you're unsure about how to double or triple eat, I've got a video that I will link in the description on exactly how to do that. This next tip I affectionately refer to your loot crate and you. Something a lot of players struggle with in LMS is knowing what items to keep and what items to discard. I'll be providing a Google Doc in the description that goes over just about every item you can get from LMS and in what priority you should keep or not keep. I find that a lot of players end up getting themselves killed because they try to do too many swaps at once. Personally, I like to keep mine to 3 to 4 items minimum, 5 if I'm feeling lucky or need to show off. This allows my gear to remain in a nice little square. That list covers most of what you need to know, but a couple things worth mentioning. The Dark Bow is always bad and should be dropped unless somebody dared you and you're trying to win a bet. The Seer's Ring is imbued, which is why it's often considered over the Berserker Ring. The Vesta's Longsword is bullshit and you should always take it over everything else. Sometimes the Vesta Longsword is just enough to win matches. The Torag Plate Legs are just a little bit better than Varak because Varak gives prayer bonus and that doesn't really matter here. I've made a video on this in the past, but it is a very common strategy in LMS to step under your opponent either to eat or to try to minimize the damage that you can do to them. When they do decide to pop out, they will often be wearing completely different gear and you won't have time to react. While the render self option is not a bad one, it doesn't show overheads and if I'm wearing the wrong thing, and it takes me a lot longer to notice that something's wrong. Instead, I use a combination of the hide local player option in Entity Hider, as well as a downloadable plugin called Player Outline, which gives me a better idea of where I am and what I'm wearing and while still being able to see the player underneath me. Use your special attacks early. This might be obvious for many, but if you use your special attacks early in a fight, it will begin to recharge and give you another special attack later in the fight. Because most fights in LMS are outlast fights, being able to guarantee more damage will win you most of your fights. Always be attacking. LMS fights often come down to the wire, or the last food. Making sure that you're always shooting or whipping your opponent can make that difference. 
even if you're at reduced stats because of a brew or something, a 14 from a reduced hit is still 14 more than you would have if you didn't do it at all. On top of that, it does the same thing in the wilderness. The player in the driver's seat of the fight, being forced to eat, will slow them down and give you more time to catch up. In the wilderness, fighting back with skull prevention on can sometimes be the reason that a potential PKer turns off smite and makes your life a little bit easier. Pay attention to your freezes and your own freeze timer. Getting a sense of when your opponent will become unfrozen is something that Runelite currently cannot offer. So knowing when they are able to do that is key. If you do not currently have the freeze timer option turned on in the timers plugin, it will give you a countdown to when the freeze cast on you will be wearing off. Using this timer, you can start to prepare to go in for a melee, for example. I've played a lot of LMS. There aren't many strategies that are new to me. PvP often feels like a big back and forth of trying out these different strategies until you catch your opponent slipping and get the kill. Here are three of the ones that I see used the most, and there are many, but we can cover those in a different video. The Gear Fake Out. You will likely see this so many times in the same fight, especially when both players are frozen. The strategy is simple. Use an attack style, but quickly swap your gear to another style without changing your prayer. Before your next attack is set to come out, switch to the original gear and use that attack. Your opponent will likely swap to the second gear style, leaving them open for the hit. The Potion Attack Because potions don't have a delay from when you can attack after them, a lot of players will use a potion to start an eating animation and mask what attack they are going to do next. If you ever see a player eating at a reasonably high HP, it's safe to assume that you're about to get specced. To do this trick, simply click on your favorite potion, click your special attack weapon, and then the spec bar, and then your opponent. A lot of players have caught on to this trick, but it still fools a fair number. The run-in. Melee can't be used at a distance. That's what makes it a melee. Something you can do to fool your opponents into praying melee is run at them, either manually or with a melee or staff equipped. To capitalize, simply change your gear to range or mage before you actually arrive. This strategy coupled with the Void Waker special attack is what makes the Void Waker so scary. The last tip I have for you is to blood barrage as much as possible. Don't wait until the end of the fight for desperation blood barrages. If you're at a high 70 HP and able to blood barrage yourself back to something like 90 HP, you will have effectively given yourself one shark over your opponent. I will usually wait to make sure that my opponent is frozen, and then begin blood barraging after that until they need to be refrozen. Those are all of the tips that I have for you today, and there are more, but I figured that if you all liked this one we could do the classic YouTuber move of making a 10 more LMS tricks video. Thank you guys for watching, please subscribe, and uh, see you!